Felicia Tucker's mother and stepfather were addicted to drugs. When she was 14, her parents' drug supplier started showing interest in her. He was 16 years older. When he would come over to get his money or whatever, he'd sit there and talk and chat a little bit. But he would always tell me um, that I was beautiful. I remember he kissed me. And I felt awkward because I'm like, this is a grown man. He's old enough to be my father. And then he started buying me stuff. I was like, wow. I felt like, man, he, he must really like me. He took me to his apartment one time. And he said, I, I want you to do something for me. He outright raped me. He um, said, now, you know, you've been teasing me, and now it's time to pay up. I felt violated. I felt used. I felt dirty. That same year, Felicia's parents were arrested and sent to jail. The supplier paid the bail and demanded a trade to clear their debt. So they made a deal, I guess, with each other. He said he, he would get his money right or whatever, and he said, well, Felicia stays with me. Felicia had to drop out of school in seventh grade and lived in isolation, enduring every type of abuse. For years, sometimes I didn't see another person because he kept me locked in the room. I felt like a slave, I did. He would sexually abuse me. He would call me out when he was ready for me. He said that I was his personal slave. I can do, I can do with you, I can kill you. He went from calling me beautiful to ugly. He beat me several times, I'm close to death. During this time, Felicia's mom and stepfather made no effort to bring her home. He used to tell me he could kill me and nobody would know because he could bury me on the, at the bottom of the hill of that land. Nobody would know because nobody's looking for you. Nobody's looking for me. Felicia felt the only solution was to end her life. I looked in his cabinet and I got some pills out and I took almost the whole bottle and I said, well, it's gonna be over now because I don't want to be here. I can't, I can't go home. You know, I'm stuck. I don't want to be here. I hate it here. And I laid there and I closed my eyes and I thought it was gonna be the end of it. And I woke up and I was mad that I woke up. Felicia lived in mental and physical captivity almost eight years. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I missed out on so much. When she was 22 years old, she finally resolved to run away. Her chance came when her captor forgot to lock her bedroom door one day. He used to always tell me that he was gonna kill me if I left. I had tried one time before to, to leave, like years before, and when, I, when he drugged me back, I said if he locks this door, you know, my bedroom door, I was gonna go out the window or anything. I was getting out of there that day. And I opened the door and I looked around at the living room, looked at where I had been for all those years, and I said, yeah, this is where I have been, but this is not my home. I'm not ever coming back here. Felicia fled 12 miles down the road on foot. I have not seen him. That was 19, October 1997. I have never seen him again. Felicia had no education, life skills, or family to live with. So the next day, she walked into the Army National Guard office and signed up. She kept her past hidden and thrived in a new environment. She later joined the Army and met her husband on assignment in 1999. Together, they had twin girls. After serving four years, Felicia left the military and the trauma and abuse from her past began to seep into her marriage. After a divorce in 2005, she found herself a single mother struggling to make ends meet. When she fell behind on her daycare payment, a church worker offered her a glimmer of hope. She said, your girls go to the daycare here at the church. Why don't you all come to church this Sunday? She said, and I want you to know that as long as, as, long as you show effort, your girls will have a place to stay, you know, a daycare. And, and I was just looking at her like, wow. She's showing me mercy. It made me feel love. I remember the pastor preaching. He said, if there anybody in here that, ha that hasn't made uh, Jesus their, their Lord and Savior. And my heart just started beating real fast, I mean like in my throat. And I walked to the altar and I got saved. I gave my life to Jesus Christ that day. I just felt, I don't know, I just felt like the weight of the world was off my shoulders. I, I felt so light. I felt like dancing. I mean, I really, I could have did flips the way I was feeling inside. Before I was in bondage physically, spiritually, 
I didn't know who God was. But when I felt the love of God, it's like that ball just started unraveling and I could start living again. Today, she is happily remarried, has a great job, and both of her daughters love God. Felicia says her new faith not only changed the course of her future, but it even changed her perspective on the past. He freed me from that bondage or feeling like I owe somebody. And he also freed me of that hurt. I forgive that man. I forgive him. I do. I pray he gets saved. I mean, I never thought I would be living the life I live today. You know what I mean? I belong to him. And I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. He says that I'm beautiful. He says that he loves me unconditionally. And I am the apple of his eye.